What's up guys, today we'll be checking out some of my favorite uh, cheap 5G smartphones. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So as you guys can see, I still think the LG V50 uh, is one of the best and cheapest 5G phones that you can get right now. I think it's an absolute steal, honestly, for a 322, uh, the cheapest one on the list. And it offers, honestly, a lot of phone uh, for this price point. So of course, we do have 5G. We have an aluminum frame. We have a glass back on here. So IP68 dust and water resistant as well. Just overall has a really nice clean looking design. Now you do have a P OLED display, it's HDR10. It's a 6.4 inch display, 1440p, and it looks really great, uh, just beautiful resolution. So if you're watching videos, playing games, this is gonna be an excellent, vibrant, and beautiful display with 538 for the PPI. So just super sharp looking display. You also have Android 10 on here with the Snapdragon 855 and Adreno 640. This is also still a great gaming phone. It's pretty much a flagship uh, chip, so you can pretty much play everything on high, uh, no problem, which is really nice. Uh, this phone also supports micro SD support and 128 gigs of storage along with 6 gigs of RAM. Uh, so you also do have uh, stereo speakers on here, which are pretty loud and sound pretty good. So you have the 3.5 millimeter jack with the quad deck. So this is going to be your best uh, bet for audio experience. If you have a good pair of headphones you plug this in turn on the quad deck you get a really good experience uh, so you also have nfc on board uh, as well as the fingerprint scanner is physical it's on the back and it works very fast no issues uh, you also have pretty good cameras on here you have a 12 megapixel standard and a 12 megapixel telephoto along with a 16 megapixel ultra wide 4k video 30 or 60 fps you also get a dual camera setup up front which is an 8 megapixel and a 5 megapixel wide camera for group selfies and stuff like that and that shoots in 1080p overall as you can see the photos are uh, definitely pretty good you can also throw gcam on this phone uh, but yeah they're just really good color natural colors dynamic range pretty good detail uh, overall i was really pleased with the cameras on this phone and you also have pretty good battery life a 4000 milliamp battery with 18 watt fast charging along with wireless charging now on 4g uh, you will get around eight hours of screen on time but i suspect if you're going to be using this phone 5g you will see a decrease in that so just be aware of that next is the samsung galaxy a51 5g this is also a very good phone i have the standard a51 so this is just a more beefier version of that so you still have essentially the same design on here which i think still looks really good uh, you have a plastic bag aluminum frame on here and you also have the super amoled display it's a 6.5 inch same display 1080p 405 for the ppi and again a very beautiful display very thin bezels a very small punch hole uh, absolutely uh, gorgeous display when it comes to deep blacks and overall color accuracy now you do have the latest version of android or you will be getting the latest version of android you have the one ui software on here which we know comes packed with a ton of features now uh, the big difference here uh, with this one is the xenos 980 on here and the Mali g76 gpu it's a much stronger gpu for 5g uh, on this phone which is really nice so uh, performance wise this is going to be a, still a very good phone a very good mid-range performer you also have micro sd support 128 gigs of internal storage and 6 gigs of ram which is really nice and this phone also comes with a headphone jack uh, just one loud speaker which is fairly loud if it's the same one on the a51 uh, you also have the fingerprint scanner under the display which again isn't the fastest from the a51 uh, but um, it works. I usually don't have any problems with it. Again, it's just not going to be like the fastest one out. Uh, but you do have a really good quad camera setup on here. 48 megapixel standard, 12 megapixel ultra wide, 5 megapixel macro, and a 5 megapixel depth. From what I'm seeing, it shoots uh, exactly like the standard A51 from the videos that I've seen. It also shoots in 4K, 32 megapixel selfie, and that shoots in 1080p as well. This phone also has NFC for your mobile payments, which is really nice. And you also have a slightly bigger battery, a 4,500 milliamp battery with 15 watt fast charging. So it should be able to handle the 5G connection without uh, completely draining. And it uh, should be an all day battery life phone if it's um, anything like the standard one. So A51 is a very solid device to consider.
All right, next is the LG Velvet 5G. This has been a very solid phone. You can pick the refurbished version up for 400 bucks. It's the one I have, and it's really great phone so far. And uh, yeah, it's got a premium design, aluminum frame, glass back. Uh, feels super solid in the hand, very thin profile. Uh, you also have IP68 dust and water resistant on this phone as well. You have a big, beautiful POLED display. It's a 6.8 inch display. 1080p 395 for the PPI uh, absolutely beautiful little notch uh, up top pretty you know slim bezels overall I just really like uh, the display on here uh, you also have Android 10 with LG skin which is basically pretty much stock Android and uh, this phone has the Snapdragon 765G processor along with the Adreno 620 uh, from just using the phone performance wise uh, it has been very good it's not laggy phone or anything like that and also you can do gaming on this phone just fine so performance wise uh, this is chip is powerful enough to handle the 5G uh, modem and all that stuff uh, so no issues with performance with this phone uh, you also have micro SD support and 128 gigs of internal storage along with 6 gigs of RAM uh, this phone does have the headphone jack but unfortunately you do not have the quad DAC on here like we're accustomed to seeing on high-end LG devices uh, you do have pretty loud stereo speakers on here as well which is pretty nice and this phone also comes with NFC now remember you can get the dual screen case with this phone and turn it into a multitasking beast basically like two phones uh, in one uh, which is going to be really nice if you want to spend a little extra money uh, you also have the fingerprint scanner built into the display this phone does not have face unlock but the fingerprint scanner is reliable it works if you do it right so i have no issues with that i just wish that you had that option for face unlock the cameras on this phone are solid uh, i think for this price point they're pretty good so you have a 48 megapixel standard an 8 megapixel ultra wide and a 5 megapixel depth sensor you get 4k 30 frames per second you also get a 16 megapixel selfie uh, at 1080p video uh, overall uh, it takes sort of like the same kind of photos we're accustomed to seeing with LG software uh, very true to life uh, tones when it comes to color you also get pretty good detail uh, dynamic range is pretty good uh, video is pretty solid you get different mic settings uh, like ASRM and um, yeah I just absolutely think the photos are perfectly acceptable for uh, this price point no issues it does need a software update to fix some of the things uh, that I saw with it but overall uh, very good cameras uh, so you do have a 4300 milliamp battery 25 watt fast charging which is really nice and 9 watt wireless charging as well uh, this is an all-day phone you can definitely use this phone all day and get away with it um, so overall just very very good uh, device here all right next is the pixel 4a 5g uh, this phone comes in at 500 bucks it's a very solid phone for you guys that are looking for a really good camera phone as well uh, so this one does not have the flashiest design on the list it's got a uh, plastic back plastic frame uh, on it again sort of like plain looking phone uh, but you do have a 6.2 inch OLED display it's 1080p 413 for the PPI uh, from what I've seen it looks pretty good you have the punch hole uh, on here as well which is really nice of course you're going to get the latest version of Android very fast updates that's the benefit with this pixel device you also have on here the Snapdragon 765G and Adreno 620 uh, on here so we're going to be seeing a lot of phones with this chipset uh, in particular with this GPU combo this phone does not have uh, any micro SD support uh, but you do have 128 gigs of storage and 6 gigs of RAM. You also still have the headphone jack on here, which is really nice. And some very loud stereo speakers uh, as well. And this phone, of course, comes with NFC on here, uh, which is really nice. The fingerprint scanner is physical, and it is on the back. Uh, so, again, the highlight with this phone is going to be the cameras. Uh, you have a 12.2 megapixel standard, 16 megapixel ultra wide. You know what you're getting with the Pixel camera. It's going to have the best camera on this list. Uh, you get 4K video. 30 or 60 fps along with an 8 megapixel selfie that shoots in 1080p uh, as well so uh, this is a super solid phone again pretty powerful chip the same as the velvet so you can do uh, some gaming on here no problem again you have a 3885 milliamp battery on here no wireless charging though uh, you do have 18 watt fast charging which isn't that impressive but uh, for battery life uh, from what I've seen uh, you should get about a day's battery life from this phone uh, so overall a very good option again 
for people that really want a 5G, really great taking camera phone. All right, last thing list is the OnePlus Nord. Amazon has it right now for 400 bucks. This is also a very solid 5G phone. Uh, looks pretty good. You have a glass back plastic frame on here. You also have the 90 Hertz HDR10 Plus Fluid AMOLED display. It's a 6.44 inch display. Uh, it's 1080p 408 for the PPI. And it uh, looks like a pretty good display. You have the double punch hole though, which I've used phones with double punch hole and it's not too bad once you get used to it, but I know some people might not like that. Uh, you get Android 10 with the latest version of Oxygen OS. Of course, this is gonna get Android 11. This again has the same Snapdragon 765G. Adreno 620 so like I said you're gonna be seeing this processor and GPU combo a lot and uh, yeah it performance wise it's gonna run fine it's gonna run uh, games just fine it's gonna be pretty good uh, performance wise you do not have a uh, micro SD support with this phone 64 gigs of uh, internal storage and 6 gigs of RAM which I think is a little low if you're not gonna put SD card support it needs to be at least 128 gigs so do note that uh, so you do have no headphone jack on here, uh, unfortunately, and no stereo speakers, just one speaker uh, on here. You also have NFC in the fingerprint scanner under the display. OnePlus usually makes some of the fastest fingerprint scanners. Uh, to me, they just are very responsive, uh, which is something that I've always loved. Uh, the Nord, from what I've seen, takes some pretty good photos. You have a quad camera setup. Uh, it's a 48 megapixel standard, a megapixel ultra wide, a five megapixel depth, and a two megapixel macro. Let's get 4K video. And you also get a, again, the dual camera setup uh, on the front. It's a 32 megapixel standard and an 8 megapixel ultra wide. Again, you have to put up with that dual camera setup. But if that's important to you, then uh, you'll love the, you know, having that ultra wide up front. And that also shoots in 4K video as well. Um, so this phone does have NFC for your mobile payments, which is really nice. And you have a pretty decent sized battery, a 4,115 milliamp battery with 30 watt fast charging, but you do not have any kind of wireless charging on this phone. So do know that uh, as well. So I think this is, is a uh, pretty solid device for a OnePlus uh, user to check out. Uh, if you're a OnePlus fan, this is definitely a device that should interest you. Uh, so what do you guys think? Be sure to let me know and I'll catch you guys in the next one.